taking different data from different sources, having common attributes, and combining it to discover new relationships and trends is often called a data mashup. The City of Chicago makes both crime and socioeconomic census data available to the public. These data sets originate from different sources, but can be mashed up to create a data model with dynamic reporting capabilities in a matter of hours on a computer as simple as your laptop. Both data sets are made available through the City of Chicago's Open Data Portal. Looking at the crime data in preview mode, notice that there's an identifier column for community area. You can find that code right here. Now, looking at the census data, which is from a different source, you'll see that a similar community area number is available in that data set. Using the socioeconomic indicator table as a dimension, a relationship can be created to tie the data together. I'll talk more about the technical details at the end of this video, but for now, let's take a look at how you can have an enriched understanding of the relationship between Chicago crime and socioeconomic factors when you have a modern business intelligence solution at your fingertips. Before we get started, I should note that no statistical analysis has been done on these data sets to prove any mathematical correlations or certainty, and information regarding data accuracy could not be taken into account. Conducting a study of that level of certainty would require access to data source systems and meeting with the teams responsible for curating the data. This demonstration is intended to show the value of mashing up and visualizing interactive data, not to prove any correlations or trends. Here's a scatter chart with two filters on the left-hand side for year and primary type of crime. The crime data goes back to 2001, but since the socioeconomic indicator data is for 2007 to 2011, we have filtered the crime data to match that time span. On the scatter chart, you can see that per capita income is on the x-axis and a hardship index is on the y-axis. Each bubble on the chart represents a different community area in Chicago. So the lower right region is a good place to be and the upper left region with high hardship and low per capita income is a bad place to be. The color of the bubbles represents the unemployment percentage decile for people 16 years of age or older. One is for zero to 10% unemployment, which is denoted by green, and four is for 30 to 40% unemployment, which is denoted by blue. Now, let's add domestic percentage to see the percent of crimes that were domestics represented as the bubble size. That calculation can be found in the crime data right here. Let's drag that down, and you'll see that as I drop this value into the size field that the bubble size will be represented by the percentage of total crimes that were of a domestic nature. Or we could also add crime count to represent the bubble size. The larger the bubble, the greater the number of crimes. Be careful drawing conclusions from this value since a larger bubble could be nothing more than the result of a larger population and not a higher crime rate. Adding a table of population data to the mashup in the future would clear up this understanding. Looking at the scatter chart, you will see that as the hardship index decreases and per capita income increases, it appears that you also have a decrease in the unemployment rate with the community areas sitting at the highest per capita income and the lowest hardship index actually having the lowest unemployment rate. It also appears that community areas with higher unemployment, lower per capita income, and a higher hardship index also have the highest count of crimes. You are now seeing data from different sources mashed up on a single chart. Not only is this mashed up data from different sources, but it's also interactive. So for example, if we were to select the value of homicide for the primary type of crime, you'll see that the chart adjusts accordingly and the difference in the count of homicides between the community areas that have a high hardship index and a low per capita income and those that have a high per capita income and a low hardship index with low unemployment is more pronounced. Now let's clear the filter and adjust the chart to a different perspective. Let's put per capita income on the y-axis
drag and drop that value. Let's put a rest percent on the X axis, which is coming from the crime data. And let's put the hardship index as a representation uh, of the bubble size. So moving back to the socioeconomic indicator data. The unemployment percent deciles are still color coding each community area. Higher per capita income appears to be associated with lower unemployment and a lower hardship index, but the arrest percent is kind of all over the place. Filtering only for homicides, there appears to be a relationship for which as per capita income rises, unemployment goes down, the hardship index goes down, and the arrest percent goes up. Filtering only for robberies shows a more clearly defined version of the same trend. Showing robberies and homicides simultaneously shows a composite view of both trend types. Now let's clear that filter and then let's add crime count to the y-axis. It appears that more crime is also associated with a higher arrest percentage. Filtering just for robbery, the arrest percent appears to move up as unemployment and the hardship index go down. When filtering only for homicide, the community areas with the greatest financial hardship seem to have the higher crime counts. Once again, we'd want to bring in population data so we can calculate a per capita homicide rate. Let's bring in the month value, which is the month of the year aggregated for the number of years that have been selected in the filter on the left hand side. And let's make that the play axis on the chart. You can see at the bottom we have values for January through December, and we can actually take a look at how the crime count versus arrest percentage changes over the course of the calendar year. So you can see that as the year progresses, the bubbles tend to move up as far as crime count is concerned. And they also tend to move left, which means that as the crime counts are going up, there may be a lower arrest rate. And this is an interesting trend that might warrant further research in order to determine if there really is a trend where the homicide rates go up in the summer. Let's remove that play axis and let's explore a few other primary types of crime. So for example, with criminal trespass, you'll see that the chart changes quite dramatically. And you'll notice that there appears to be a relationship where as the crime count goes up, the arrest percentage also goes up. And the community areas that actually have the highest crime count also have a low hardship index and uh, also a high arrest percentage. Perhaps residents in this area are more concerned about the property that they own and may be more likely to pick up the phone and call the police when criminal trespassing occurs. We could also take a look at arson. So if we select for that primary type, you'll see that there's actually a very low arrest percent, uh, but the crime counts uh, vary quite significantly between different community areas from between 0 and 20 all the way to between 160 and 180. Moving to a new mashup chart, you will see that crimes are plotted on a map by community area by a 24 hour clock on the right hand side and by year at the bottom. Let's filter for just homicides and within homicides filter for first degree murder. So we select the homicide value from primary type and then we can filter for first degree murder. On the right hand side, you'll see that more first degree murders appear to occur late at night and early in the morning. Moving to the chart that shows crime count by year, we can add more detail by taking it down to the month level by year. Having done that, you can see the seasonality of homicides and how they tend to trend up in the summer according to the data that we have available. Perhaps your next mashup could be to add publicly available weather data 
to this data model and look for relationships between extreme heat and violent crime. Perhaps a research team could then do a study to see if affordable air conditioning would reduce violent crime. There are numerous tools that can mash up this type of data, and increasingly there are more which are affordable for home users and citizens working from a personal laptop. In my opinion, this is where the open data revolution will create tremendous value. The tool used in this video is Microsoft Excel 2013 with Power Pivot and Power View plugins enabled. At the Open Data Bits website at opendatabits.com, there is a build your own mashup documentation for these data sets and more. All of the content and downloads available at our site are totally free and you are not required to register for anything. There is a blog post at the Open Data Bits site that provides guidance and links to build out this mashup on your own. The URL link is on the YouTube video description below. Once you have a little experience, mashups and visualizations such as the one in this video can be built out in a matter of hours. You can bring open data interoperability to a whole new level. You can visit our site at opendatabits.com or follow us on Twitter for updates, questions, or for networking purposes.